Linux, and today I'm going to introduce you to a Python utility that I created called the Creep Detector, and I'm also going to show you how you can use Jupyter Notebook to visualize war driving data. If you watched my last video on war skating, I showed you how you could quickly and inconspicuously pick up wireless data using Kismet on a Raspberry Pi, but today I'm going to show you a more practical application of war driving in order to detect, in order to detect stalkers, and I'll also show you how you can visualize data using Jupyter Notebook. My friend Cody, who you may know from his channel Nullbyte, invited me up to Null Space Labs in Burbank to create and test out a model of the creep detector that can plot out suspected stalkers on a map. If you want to check out our full video, it'll hopefully be out soon, and I'll leave the link in the description as soon as I find out. Using the same setup as my war skating video, I started Kismet on my Raspberry Pi and was ready to start reconnaissance. To set up a control device that we could recognize as a creep, Cody programmed an ESP8266 microcontroller to broadcast an access point with the name Creeper. Once I set out skating, Cody followed me nearby in a car, often placing the access point at various checkpoints ahead of my route to make sure that we could get flagged locations for the creep detector. Using the older command line version of Kismet outputs a bunch of these different XML files after a war driving session, which actually makes data parsing in Python a lot easier compared to the newer Kismet web interface version that has a SQL database. So, the coding environment that we'll be using is called Jupyter Notebook, which I like because it makes data visualization a whole lot easier. So for instance, I can do stuff like render this map of creeps below, or I can also natively render data tables like this. This first cell here just imports a couple of the libraries we'll be working with. So for instance, Folium for map plotting, um, Pandas for the data table you saw below, an XML parsing library. And here you can see that I've linked some of the XML files that we'll be working with. So the NetXML file and GPS XML file. And these just contain the wireless devices that we picked up during our war driving session and some GPS information that's tied down to them. The next cell here just contains a function definition that I created um, that basically reads in a MAC address and strips off the OUI prefix and returns um, the MAC address vendor. So if I run um, get device type, that's the function on a MAC address 000000, and I don't need the last three octets because they'll be stripped up here. We can see that it returns that the device is a Xerox Corporation device. So this could be useful for seeing what kinds of devices are following us, like I could see, oh, it's an iPhone, Samsung, etc. These next two cells here are just some more functions that I created. Um, this one here is just for finding the distance between two GPS coordinates using the Haversine formula. And this is used later on for determining whether or not a device was spotted outside of a certain threshold range, and then determining if it's a creep based off how many times it's seen outside that range. The cell below it here is pretty much the main part of the program that handles data parsing in the Kismet XML files. And basically what it's doing is searching for certain tags and attributes from the XML file. So for example, BSSID, distinguishing whether or not it's a um, network or a client device. And if we look in the actual XML file itself, we can see some of the tags it's looking for, like BSSID, um, I can search for wireless networks, or client devices. This next cell here handles the actual function call itself, and first it searches through the XML tree for network devices, so access points, and then it searches for clients that are underneath these access points. And then it appends it to a list called station list. So if I run this, it'll generate a list that contains every single wireless device that we picked up during our session. So I can actually render this using a panda data frame. If I change the list to station list, yeah, we can see a list of every single wireless device that we picked up, except it got truncated and a few of them, more than a few of them got replaced with ellipses here. But the devices came out to over 1200 that we picked up during our war driving session. But in order to filter out the devices that we want to mark as creeps, we want to see whether or not they're outside a certain threshold. So this code here utilizes the Haversine formula that you saw above, and it detects whether or not a device was spotted outside a quarter mile range, so 0.20, and then it will add them to a list called creeps here. But for some reason, in the Kismet file, it was showing some duplicate MAC addresses, so like if I copy this one, and I find it in the XML file, you can see that it's shown two times. So the first time as a wireless network and also as a client underneath that same wireless network. So I just added this block of code here that just strips that out. 
And then this last piece of code right here basically just grabs from the GPS XML file every single um, GPS location that the device was spotted at. So up until this point we were dealing with just the net XML file, but the net XML file only contains the bare amount of information that we need to identify the creep. So like the BSSID, um, ESSID, encryption, all that other stuff. And it only contains two GPS locations, which are the two farthest points apart from each other that Kismet could distinguish. But the GPS XML file itself contains a list of every single um, GPS coordinate that it was spotted at, so that's much more useful. And then finally, I just rendered this data frame below that prints out all of the devices that were flagged as creeps. So if we look down here at the bottom, yay, we found the creeper device that we planted. So to make this more interesting, I of course wanted to plot out my war driving path and also where certain devices were seen. So first this device gathers every single GPS coordinate that we traversed and it sticks it into a list called coordinates. But this list comes out in a random order from the Kismet files, which isn't particularly useful since it would plot out my route kind of random. So I had to create this sketchy algorithm here that sorts them out to create a clear path. So if I comment out all this code, and I run it below on this map, you'll see why that is. Yeah, so this is just the raw data that was pulled from the coordinates list when it's unsorted, and it's just this huge jumbled mess of random GPS coordinates. So basically what my algorithm does is it looks at the first index of this coordinate list, and then it searches through recursively to find the next GPS coordinate that's closest to the one that's at the front, and then it rearranges the list in that order. So if I run this code up here once, so right now it's actually calling it twice here. If I call it once and I render the map, you can see that it already looks kind of better. But the problem is the first index in the array is still kind of random because it starts in a random order. So I figured that by the end of the sorting process, it would at least find one of the endpoints, whether or not it's the start or the finish. If I just reverse the list, which I've done here, and then run the algorithm twice, it gives me a better result. So if I run that again, yeah, you can see we have a more complete path and it looks just a little bit better. So I figured at the end of that sorting process, at least one of the endpoints, either the starting or finishing endpoint of my actual route, ends up at the beginning or the end of the coordinates list. All I had to do was just find the largest gap between two points, which you can see is here, the biggest straight line and then just set that as the other endpoint. So if I comment this out and run it, you can't really see a difference, but in the actual array itself, it sorted out some stuff. And then if I run my algorithm again three times, it basically gives me the exact plot that I actually followed. So I kind of have no clue what the hell this is actually doing, but it kind of works in the end. So if you're going to run this on your own data set, just make sure that you know that this exists here and you should tweak around with the numbers and just see what works out for you. So this last part of the program just plots the creeps on the map with the toggle so you can see where each device is spotted with color coding and also the, their BSS IDs. So if I go up here and reference um, our creep list, we can see that the creeper device was number six. So if I uncomment this stuff and run the cell, we get all of the creep devices plotted to a map. And if I go to the toggle over here in the corner, I can untoggle everything except for the last device. And these are the two locations that Cody had the creep device set up at, which is pretty cool. And also, as an unintended side effect, we accidentally picked up Cody's phone in the results, which we weren't expecting, because we initially thought it would only pick up Wi-Fi access points, which is why we had to create one. And I think it's this Murata device here, I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, that was completely how the creep detector operates from a technical standpoint, and hopefully you can see how Jupyter Notebook can be used to visualize data, especially how useful war driving is for an application like this. If you want to check out the code for this project, you can find it at the link below. And you can also check out the current project documentation on my website with more resources in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.